So let's talk about sublimation paper. There are a lot of different sublimation papers out there and you may be wondering what's best to use and what's best avoided. First, you should know that sublimation paper is not the same that you might already have like sitting in your printer, even though it might look the same at first. A good sublimation paper has three things. It holds the sublimation ink well without allowing, allowing the little ink dots from your printer to blur together. It withstands the high heat of your press and it efficiently releases the dyes into your surface when heated. So you get an awesome result like this. Now I have a variety of sublimation papers here in my studio. I have a sub 125. I have one a sub 105. A sub eco, die master, R, a printer's jack, then there's so many more. The question is, what's the difference between all of them? Most all of these are general sublimation papers that will work for a variety of surfaces. There are other sublimation papers out there that are more specialized, but these should work for pretty much all sublimation jobs. So let's take a look at a piece of sublimation paper so you can see what it looks like. I'm gonna switch over to my desk. Let's look at our A sub paper. Let's check this up a little bit. Here we go. So this is A sub. It's well loved. I have actually several boxes of this. It comes in, it's actually really nicely packaged, but it comes all wrapped up like this. This is important because humidity matters for paper. So always keep it in the plastic and keep it closed. Okay. So pull out a sheet here. So this is the back of the paper. It has a sub printed on it very conveniently because this lets us know what the front is, which is this. So this is the front of the paper. Not all sublimation papers have this convenient little watermark on the back to let us know. But if you do use a sub or another one that has it, you want to print on the side that doesn't have that mark, just so you know. So you can see it looks like a regular old piece of paper, right? And if you just watch someone do it, you might think, oh, they're just using like, you know, the copy paper that comes from the store or whatever. But in fact, it makes a difference, right? Because this paper has a special coating on it, which allows the ink to absorb differently. In fact, basically not anywhere near as much. It's also got a I think it has like a little, some silicone on it or something like that. I'm not positive because I didn't make this paper, but it's got a co some kind of coating on it that will allow it to withstand the super high heat of sublimation, which can get as high as 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so it makes a difference. Your sublimation paper makes a difference. So then how do you decide which sublimation paper to use? So one important thing I want you to pay attention to is paper weight. Um, so for example, a sub comes in 125 grams, 120 grams, 105 grams, and also one called eco. These numbers refer to the weight of the paper. 125 G is 125 grams, and it's the thickest sublimation paper. The thicker, the heavier the paper, and the better it will hold your ink and saturate your surface. If you want full color, vibrant designs, then you want the heavier weight paper. A sub is actually my go-to for nearly every project. If you use the 125 gram paper, however, and you see wheel marks, uh, you may actually want a thinner paper. The heavier paper can also cause issues with hard and rigid surfaces because the ink doesn't absorb into it the same way and it has nowhere to go and it can kind of blur or ghost. If this happens, you'll wanna go with a thinner paper. So 105 gram paper is the thinnest sublimation paper that I know of. Um, but you might be wondering why on earth would I want to use the thin paper if the heavier paper gives the best and most saturated color? Well, it turns out that thin sublimation paper like this is better when you're making seamless designs like our full color sublimation doormats like the gnome that's all colored or even a sublimation tumbler. The thinner paper is also better for some printers that can get the wheel lines or pick up extra ink when going through the printer. For example, when I switched to 105 gram paper on my Epson workforce, it worked much better. 
The catch is that 105 gram paper is more likely to curl and it doesn't do as well with heavy ink saturation. The low weight of the paper is more likely to cause it to move, bleed, it goes, that kind of thing. And if your surface looks dull and faded like a t-shirt, it could also be related to the low weight of the paper. You'd want to move up to the heavier paper to get more ink on it and then more ink onto your surface. All right, so what about this Eco paper also by ASAP? It's basically less expensive sublimation paper. So if you're doing a lot of something, you could really, uh, you could definitely use this, but it's only, it's a little less. So I'm not sure it's worth it personally, unless you're working in volume. We're gonna test out whether this paper is basically as good as these papers later on, okay? So weight of paper is another big factor. But also, what about the compatibility of your paper with your printer? For example, TruePix paper is optimized to work with sawgrass sublimation printers. It's 120 grams and it works on a variety of surfaces. Die Master, which I have right here, on the other hand, is optimized to work for Epson printers and it's 105 grams. I'm not sure why it's so thin, but it could be that Epson Workforce printers were one of the first printers people began converting to sublimation years ago, and the workforce, I think, really needs a thinner paper. Now, you may have also heard of people using regular paper for sublimation. For example, laser copy paper. I'm trying to get it out. Hang on a second. It's like I put it over here so I could grab it. There we go. <laughs> have you heard about this? So. Some people swear by laser paper because laser paper is um, formulated to withstand the high heat of a laser printer. The question is, does it hold the ink well enough? So I thought we should do a test of six papers, three A-sub, the laser paper, true picks, and some regular old copy paper, just so you can see what they each look like. Sound good? You want to, I want to do this so that you can see the difference. Because I could sit here and talk to you all day, but it's really seeing that makes a difference. I love to test things. So I've actually pre-printed everything so you don't have to wait for me to print anything. But I'm going to show you each one before we, we uh, press it. And I need to put that back in the box later. Keep your paper away from humidity. Uh, humidity is definitely makes a difference in um, always with paper, but especially with sublimation paper. Um, humidity and, and uh, sublimation don't go hand in hand. Okay, so let me grab my tests. Okay, here we go. So I pre-printed all of our project, all, all of our things today because it really would take a while you would get really bored, okay? So, let me put them in order. We're gonna start with um, 125 gram. Now, you'll notice this is mirrored already. Whenever we print sublimation, we print it in mirror image because we press it like this and it transfers, right? So we need to have it mirrored. So this is 125 grams, and you can see here also, I want you to note that it is definitely, let's actually compare this to our finished doormat so you can see this difference here. So here is the, you know, obviously bigger, but here's the um, colors of this one. I want you to see how they're duller on the paper. This is totally normal. So many people who are new to sublimation, they print it out the first time and I'm like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with my color? Chances are nothing is wrong with it. This is the way it looks. It looks dull before you transfer it. So you can never really tell um, until you actually go to transfer it, okay? And I recommend always transferring uh, just to write polyester fabric when you're doing tests. Okay, so our next one is going to be this 105 gram a sub paper. Okay, so this is a little thinner. You probably can't tell, but you see how it kind of wiggles more? <laughs> I do the wiggle test when I'm trying to determine how thick something is. So it's like not as stiff, so. There we go. Okay. And then our third one will be the um, A sub eco. And I want to know also that because I did this test, I noticed that the back watermark of each of these different types is actually a different color. So if you got your paper confused, you could still tell which one is which. So the silver 
is top of the line 125 gram. The uh, green is 105 gram, the thinner paper. And the pink or magenta is the Eco, which is the you know less expensive one. All right, and then we're gonna try True Picks. This is the paper that came with my sawgrass. And so I'll put that there. And I did print that one on the sawgrass so that we had a fair test because it's, it's optimized for the sawgrass. And then here is our laser copy paper, okay? And give them enough space there so you can see them. And this is our 20 pound copy paper. This is just the regular stuff that you probably already have. Uh, the super cheapo stuff, but I wanted you to see what it would look like if you use that because I think sometimes people accidentally use the wrong paper and just don't even realize it. All right, so we're going to heat up. I'm going to use the easy press. I'm going to heat my easy press up to 400 degrees. We're going to press for 30 seconds. Heat is what activates the ink and changes it from a solid to a gas, and then it basically sinks into our material, and then as it cools down, it stays in there. It's super cool. And I am going to use a polyester, a piece of polyester fabric. It's actually like a garden flag, but I like to use these for tests because they're like already bound on the edges and they don't look all ragged from when I cut them. Okay, so let's get all prepped. I'm going to use my pressing pad. We always want to press, you know, press on a pad like this. Uh, they make this is the Cricut one, the Cricut 12 by 12 inch one. There's lots of them out there. You might, if you're using like a clamshell printer, you might already have a you know, pressing pad on it. If you have the Cricut Auto Press, it comes with one on it, right on it. So this is really only necessary if you're using an easy press like this, you know, this kind of portable heat press. And just as a note for anyone who's new to sublimation, you do need to use a heat press for sublimation. You can't use a household iron. They don't get hot enough, typically. I'm sure there's some exceptions out there, but typically they don't. Okay, so switch over. And I feel like we need more. I'm gonna adjust my camera a little bit here so we can see a little bit more of my desk. There we go. Okay, so here's my pressing pad. I'm going to put the polyester on there. I've got the heat press warming up right now. So when it gets to 400 degrees, we will preheat this. Always preheat your surfaces. Moisture and sublimation are not BFFs. <laughs> you need to get that moisture out and the best way to get the moisture out is by preheating it. That's why I said humidity does not go with sublimation paper. It just totally messes it up, causes ghosting, weirdness, all that kind of thing. So we'll always wanna preheat it five, 10 seconds. It doesn't really matter. You can preheat it longer if you want. All that matters is that you're getting it. Oh, and of course I forgot. We need to protect our pressing mat. I, I have totally forgotten to do that in the past. I will not lie. <laughs> all right, so let's get out a piece of cardstock. In a pinch, I have used just regular sublimation paper or, you know, copy paper, but it's, it can have a lot more moisture in it, so I don't recommend it. Cardstock is a heavier, it's a better choice for protecting your mat. Okay. And don't use Teflon. Teflon um, can trap moisture. Okay. So we're going to set this on here, and I'll, I'll be putting these on once we got it preheated. Let's see, I can, I'm happy to answer questions as we go along too. Barbara says, do you have to have a big heat press to do with those sublimation um, images? If you're doing a big image, yes, you definitely want a big heat press. Um, I'm using the 12 by 10 inch one. I've also used the Cricut Auto Press, which is 12 by 15. They, they make traditional clamshell presses go bigger, but I, but, for this process, you, we're gonna show you how to do it with this size, okay? So you can totally do it with a nine by nine inch easy press. We're gonna show you how to do that. So you don't have to have a heat press that is, what are these doormats like? Um, two feet or three feet by two or something. You, no, I'm sure they make them that big, but I've never seen one that big. <laughs> so you are actually gonna be able to use a smaller heat press to do this big project. 
you might see a little overlap, you know, as you do it, but it's really not that noticeable. So not to worry. Okay. And uh, let's see here. Grace says, can we use cardboard if we don't want to use cardstock to protect the pad? Maybe it depends on it. So if it was like that really thin cardboard and it's not hum, you know, like damp, I think that would be fine. If it's corrugated cardboard, I think that I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that corrugation might do. So I'm not, I haven't experimented with it. Okay. The easy press is warmed up. So let's preheat our surface. So I just press it for, you know, 10 seconds. We're just getting the moisture out. If you ever see steam rising, that's exactly what's happening. And then we're going to do the whole piece of fabric. So we're going to get down here as well to this side. So yeah, this is the 12 by 10 Cricut Easy Press. You could do this with the nine by nine. You can also sublimate with the mini Cricut Easy Press, but um, it won't, I don't think it'll transfer as well, especially with big images because you, it's just so tiny, right? But you can do it. If you're doing like little ornaments and stuff, I think the mini Cricut Easy Press works great. Okay, so now we need to get our designs onto our flag. And I want to note that there's a little seam here. So I'm going to let it drape off the edge of the mat like this so it doesn't cause any issues. Okay. All right. So let's put our designs on and we're going to tape them down. Whenever you put your design, your sublimation print onto your surface, and again, it could be anything with polyester or anything that says it has a sublimation coating on it. Okay. There's lots and lots of things that you can make, but you want to put it face down. Like right. That's why we mirror it. So I'm going to try arranging them all first to see how well they're going to fit before I start taping. There we go. So I'm going to try to put them in order. Because I feel like I can definitely trim some of these because they got to fit, right? <laughs> so let's trim. The, by the way, another tip that I have in many of my tutorials is that this sharp edge of the paper can actually leave an imprint in there. So if I were to say tear it instead like this, it sort of bevels the edge and it won't leave such a sharp print. So a little tip for you there. All right, next is this True Picks. Let's trim off his little top too. Here we go. And I put the names of everything that I'm using on here so that we can compare. And I think I'll do the, I'll tape these two here, our two copy papers. I'll do them separate because they're kind of hanging off the end. Let's just make sure that they're going to fit. Right. I always like to do this if I'm doing like any kind of piecing. Um, and this is true for the doormat as well. Move these things here. Let's make sure I'm going to have space here for the gnomes at the bottom. It looks like I will. Okay. Now we tape it in place because th and this is very important to be like, oh, this is fine. I'm just going to press it like this. Use your heat resistant tape. Um, it's not just to prevent it from moving. So don't put just like one piece there and think it's fine. When you lift up your heat press, it can actually kind of suck up the paper. Like, you know, just from, I don't know why it does that. Just, you know, one of those things, those physics things. <laughs> uh, but it can suck it up and then it can cause air to come in there. And it, because it's an, it's gas, right? It can kind of blur, right? So you want to, you, you, I tape all four sides. You don't have to tape the whole length necessarily on a project like this, but make sure that's, uh, that might not be high enough up there. I want to get this one up here too. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be the full length on something like this, but if you're doing like a tumbler, right? Tumblers are very finicky and you would want to tape, tape the daylights out of that tumbler. <laughs> the more likely it is to like bubble up, when you lift up your paper or whatever, that's, that's when you're going to want to make sure that every side is taped. Okay. Thank you all for helping each other in the chat. I appreciate it. I will answer questions when we're done with our test. If I attempt to do it now, um, I will probably get distracted <laughs> and lose my train of thought. Okay. 
and then a little bit at the top here because I wouldn't want that to open, you know, like open up when I am doing the heat, the pressing and blur. Do I have tape on all four sides? I'm missing it there at the bottom. Okay, we are now ready to press. So again, I'm gonna let that top there hang off the edge so it doesn't, because it's got kind of doubled up there. This seam is a lot smaller here on the side. And then to protect our heat press, I'm gonna put a piece of butcher paper. This is butcher paper, it's not wax paper, it's not freezer paper, it's not Teflon. It is plain white uncoated butcher paper. Uh, you can get it on Amazon and get it lots of places. And I always use a fresh sheet. You'll probably see why in just a minute when we press this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and press it now. And it, again, it's set to 400 degrees for 30 seconds. So when we press with the easy press, we wanna go straight down. Start it. You don't need to press really heavy. This is this press is as easy press is fairly hefty. You just rest your hand on it, like I'm doing here. <laughs> so it's currently sublimating. The ink gets super hot. It goes from solid to gas, and it's really pretty awesome in my opinion. It's a really cool thing. So when it's done, we lift it straight up, slowly. Here we go. I want you to notice that you can see why I say to use a fresh sheet of butcher paper. Some of the ink tends to come through, right? So this was to protect our press from getting the ink on it because if we got ink on our press, it might transfer to another project. We can usually take this butcher paper off right away. You see how in the corner there, there's some ink. So we're not going to want to reuse this again. So recycle this paper, use it for something else. Now we want to leave the, our sublimation prints in place as they're, because they're, they're still kind of finishing up. It doesn't instantly turn off as soon as you release that heat press. It has to cool off and re-solidify. So don't just yank everything off because you're super eager to see what it looks like. Give it, you know, 10, 15 seconds, and then you can start removing it. You might want to use tweezers to take it off. I'm, I'm not going to because I don't even know where mine are. But it's a good idea so that you don't burn your fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and take mine off. See how we did. So there is our A sub 125 gram. Here is, look at how beautiful and vibrant that is. This is 150 five gram, so 125, 105. This is the A sub eco, and this is the true picks. They look really good, don't they? They're all really vibrant. They all transferred really well. I can totally see differences though. Um, for example, this, uh, this one here, the heart is not as, as uh, saturated. Same with this one. These two are the best. This one is, you have to look really closely. I would say those two are the winners so far. Now let's do copy paper and see how that goes. Okay, so here's our copy paper. Here is laser copy paper. This should be able to withstand the heat. We're gonna need to trim that. And you can see they're gonna be a little tight at the bottom. That's okay, it'll be fine. That's what Greg always says. We'll be watching some action movie and something terrible happens. And he's like, it'll be fine. <laughs> so let's tape it here. Oops, that's not even remotely on the paper. <laughs> you do want to be cautious of where you tape. Sometimes, you know, especially with like a full coverage design, you can kind of see the tape line, kind of. So whenever possible, and this is very true for the doormats, you'll want to tape. Um, where it's just really paper. And I explain all of that in our tutorial that you'll that will be on my channel tonight at 7 p.m. Okay, so here is, and this is regular copy paper. I took this from Greg's printer in his room. So, you know, I don't even, I'm not even sure what the brand is. It's just 20 pound copy paper. That's what it said on it. So and I'm doing this because I want you to see what happens if we use paper that's not meant for sublimation. 
so that you can make an educated decision about what to use. Okay, so I'm gonna I'll only put my press on this part. I'm not gonna reheat any of that. If you reheat your sublimation, it can fade because it resublimates and then kind of disperses weirdly. So we don't want that. So a fresh piece of butcher paper. I'll put that here. And actually I'm gonna move my whole thing so I have a better surface to rest my heat press on. There we go. I'll use this as a guide so I know that I'm not getting my other things. There we go. Okay, let's press this again for, make sure I got that right, there we go. There we go, for 30 seconds. Again, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, those of you who have easy presses, by the way, I like to press mine upside down like this. So, <laughs> because then the cord doesn't get in your way, right? It kind of just, it's like towards you. So if you ever see me doing that, that's what I'm doing. I think it, like, I don't like to accidentally burn my cord or also like worrying about where the cord is. So, so just a little tip there. I don't always remember to do it, but when I do, it's so much more useful. Okay, we lift that straight up. We can take away butcher paper. Note that this one definitely transferred over, um, which is not gonna be surprising. This is just regular copy paper. One is laser, one is whatever, I don't even know. <laughs> uh, but it's just not going to be formulated for sublimation ink, which is like super, is really, it's like just different, right? So here is our project. Let's let it keep, let's let it keep uh, finishing its solidification process. I don't know if that's a term for that. I'm sure that, I'm sure there's some term. All right, it should be good now. It's been what, five seconds, that's fine. Okay, let's take it off and see how it did. So this, this side here is the laser copy paper. So you can see it definitely transferred. It's not bad, right? Not bad. And then this side is the regular copy paper. That's not, not high heat. Um, we've got some like kind of weird blurriness here, sort of faded. It did, it did transfer some of it. <laughs> it's not as bad as it could have been. So those are, so let's take a look at these. I have another one to show you too. So I actually did another test in advance. So here we have 125 gram, 105 gram. You can definitely see that there's a difference, right? The heart in the center is very helpful for seeing how solid it is. Uh, one of these two, I would say is my winner here. Um, this is a sub eco cheaper paper. So if you have a lot of things you have to do, it might help to use that. I don't know. I've never. Re I mostly. I mostly only use 125 gram. Um, and then here's the True Picks. Not quite as good, I have to say. And then down here we have our laser copy paper. Let me hold that up a little bit more so you can see. Right. You can see how the copy paper is just not as it's just not as vibrant. Okay. Now I did another test for you of my subliflower. Those of you who've been following me in sublimation know what the subliflower is. It shows all the colors. So here it is. And you can get this file free. It's a great test file for testing out your color and doing just what I'm doing right now. It's over on, in my free resource library. I don't know off the top of my head what the design number is. Maybe someone in chat can let me know <laughs> what the design number is so I can pass it along to everybody. Okay, so I'm gonna hold this up so you can see. Here is the 125 gram. Here is the 105 gram, five gram. Here's the Eco. Here's the True Picks. Here is laser copy paper and 20 pound copy paper. You see what a gigantic difference those are at the bottom? So yeah. Here are the tests all together. So of these, these are definitely better. Yeah, I don't see, in fact, a huge difference between the 125 and the 105. So that's pretty awesome. And that's what I would have expected. 
the A sub ego is maybe just a tad not as saturated. But if I didn't have this right here to compare everything to, I probably wouldn't notice. The true picks, you know, again, if I didn't have it to compare, I'd probably be happy. But compared to like one of these, it's not as good. And then laser copy paper is like second worst and regular copy paper, as we would expect, is horrible. I want you to notice these like weird, like that's not ghosting. I don't know what we would call that. But I believe what happened here is that the paper kind of bubbled up or it was moist, it was moist or something. And, um, but at the high heat made it kind of warp. And so it no longer had good contact with the surface, right? So especially once I removed it, the heat press from it, it was very warped, right? So it just didn't look very good. And so it caused that. I, mean, I don't believe it's pressure problems or anything like that. These, these all had the exact amount of same amount of pressure. So definitely don't use 20 pound copy paper. I just did this only to show you what it might look like if you accidentally use the wrong paper. But the truth is, is that all the rest, other than this one, are probably good enough. If you want really, really good, I would probably go with these three. And if you want the best, I think I go with the top two here, these two right here, right? This 125 gram is my go-to. I just default to this one. Again, let me show you the box so that you know which one I'm talking about. That's the uh, A sub 125 gram paper. Um, it's just, I have like four boxes like this <laughs> and I've been various places, so I always have it. And this just works really, really well. I've never had any major issues with it. When I want to do something like, let me get it out for you. This with seamless designs, right? I use uh, this one here, the 105 gram paper. Because also for tumblers, um, if we ever want anything seamless, it does a better job of creating less of a seam. It just seems to work better. That thinner paper, something about it. I don't really quite know why, but it works. And this lovely doormat is a tutorial that we're doing tonight at 7 p.m. If you're watching this as a replay later on, it should already be on my channel. It's called How to Sublimate Large Designs. So we're showing you exactly how to do this um, and without having seams. I mean, I guess you can kind of see it here, but this actually is probably the side of the Easy Press, right? Or the Cricut Auto Press, because we have to you know, there's a little overlap. So when you have a little overlap, you can get a little lightning effect. But Sarah, look how amazing this looks. Isn't that awesome? Do you like it? <laughs> okay, I have some questions. I'm going to answer some questions here. Susan says, if you cut with scissors instead of ripping, will you get a line? Not always, not always. So sometimes with sublimation paper, that hard edge of a piece of paper, especially with high pressure, this isn't going to have high pressure. But if you're using like a clamshell heat press or the Cricut Auto Press, it will have more pressure for sure. Um, it'll actually put the indent of the paper. And so you'll see like your shirt, it'll be beautiful, but it'll have like a little faint little rectangle shadow around it. It's not ink. It's just the edge of the paper has created this slight, um, I think one of my, I think I could see it. Um, nope, it's now, the humidity has now moved it, so I can't see it, but I've, I've definitely seen it. So my tip is to actually rip the edges so that you're beveling the edges, or you could use a pair of scissors and cut around your design in like kind of following the form of it. And then if it transfers, it doesn't really stand out as a rectangle or square. It just looks like it's supposed to be like that. A little shadow, right? You don't notice it. Uh, let's see here. Elspeth says, what weight is the cardstock that you're using to preheat the mat? Um, I'm using either 65 pound or 80 pound. It doesn't matter what weight it is. I've just found that that it, cardstock does work better than let's say a piece of laser paper or something. So, uh, but I have used it in a pinch. I have used laser paper when I needed to protect my mat and I couldn't find my piece of cardstock. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Um, 
do you, does anyone have any other questions about sublimation paper for me that I can answer? I would love to help you out with any questions. If you ever have a question about anything sublimation related, uh, we have an awesome, awesome sublimation group on Facebook called Sublimation Made Easy. It is it is an amazing group. I learned so much from being in this group. I truly, I learned about using 105 gram paper instead of 125 gram paper from the amazing people in my group. Like I, they were just chatting about, you know, what paper to use. And someone's like, this works better for seams. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to go test it. And sure enough, it does. So if you want to learn more about sublimation, I highly recommend you come over and join us. It is at jennifermaker.com slash sublimation group. Also, did anyone have the Subla Flower design number so I can share it? I would love to. I don't remember the design number. Okay. And any other questions about sublimation paper? Brenda says, can I use a sub paper in sawgrass? You totally can. Uh, in the print manager for sawgrass, you'll just want to use type A paper. That's what I use. That works great. When you use true picks, you'll want to select that paper. So there's a lot of different paper choices, but you'll want to use type A for a sub paper. Yes. Um, let's see. Don, uh, Donna says, when you put a, the sublimation paper into an Epson printer, is the white side up in the tray or the side that says A sub on it? Well, they might not all be the same, but in mine, and I'm using the 47 something, whatever series, <laughs> um, it goes A sub up, right? And this is, I find this is true for almost any printer that has a paper tray. Can you see down here? Let's move this here. So this has a paper tray in it. Right? Paper tray. So do I have a piece of paper here that I can demonstrate for you? Let's, let's take one out, shall we? Let's take out a piece of ASUB. Oh, that's right. I have this one from when we were looking at it. So here is our paper. Again, here is the side that we sublimate on, all pretty snowy white. This is the side we don't sublimate on, right? It's very obvious. Um, and sadly, not all sublimation paper will be like this. So what you'll see instead is, um, where is the die master? Here is this side. This is this is a die master R, 105 gram. Um, so it actually tells you on the box what side to print on. So you need to keep it in the box <laughs> so that you, when you take it out, you're making sure you use this the right side, okay? Sometimes they do have like different colors on one side versus the other. So you might be able to tell, but then you gotta know which is the right side to start with. So if you're ever having a problem and it doesn't seem right, you might be printing on the wrong side. Um, but in, with the A-sub, it goes in, at least with my printer, it goes in with the A-sub side up. So it would go in just like this. That is true of the sawgrass as well. I don't know if it's true of every Epson Eco Tank, but um, if it has a paper tray, usually, usually it goes in. So if you need to check and you're not sure and you're worried, Often it will say right in the paper tray, there'll be like a little icon and it'll indicate which side because this is a problem for everybody. <laughs> or you can just Google it. Go to Google, type in your question and you know it'll tell you. The manual will always tell you. Uh, I mean, Rachel says, which paper works best for mugs or a flat surface? So I recommend, let's turn that off. <laughs> um, so for really... Flat, hard, honestly, I, I use the ASAP paper just fine without any issues on a mug. Um, but you might want to drop down to 105 pound for that. Anything that's like super hard with it, it's not like absorbent, right? The way like say polyester is, um, dropping down to 105, it'll have a little less ink on it. And so it'll be a little easier for it to release um, enough of it and not too much of it that it gets kind of a little muddy, right? So I would say if I had to choose between the two for a very hard surface, like a mug, like ceramic, I'd probably say 105 grams. Always test though. Testing is fun because all of this really matters, um, is really dependent upon your press. 
and your printer and your design and your surface, right? There's a lot of variables here. So if it's important, always do a little test. You don't have to waste anything. You can put something in the corner, right? You can put it on the other side. You can have one, one of your shirts or one of your mugs that's just for testing, stuff like that. Okay. If you do have any questions, be sure to come on over to our sublimation group. I would love to have you there. By the way, I also have a mini course on sublimation called Sublimation Startup. You can find all the information on that over at sublimationstartup.com. <music>